Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Northumberland Zoo on YouTube. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. We really appreciate it. Uh, this week's episode, we're going to be having a little look inside of one of our new developments, uh, which has kind of been hidden away. Um, and we're also hosting a mock rock workshop. So uh, I'll explain a little bit about what that is. But first of all, let's go inside and have a little look, sneak peek. Um, this is an area that we're hoping to have open for the summer. Um, and it's to basically try and replace our hothouse. So all of our inverts, reptiles, um, the skink, everything, frogs are gonna be moving into here and we're gonna have some new exhibits in here as well. Uh, the tortoises are moving in here as well. And obviously, as you can kind of guess that if all the animals are moving out the hothouse, what's happening to the hothouse? Well, actually we're thinking about taking it down. So a lot of work to do, but as you can see already, Critterland looks amazing. Critterland isn't gonna be the same name, but obviously, we still need to come up with a name. So if anybody has any suggestions for what we should call this new area, then drop them in the comments. So in here, we're gonna have all of our different stick insects, uh, potentially gonna get a snake in here. Um, we've got the skink gonna go in here. We've got some new frogs going in there. Um, down the bottom end is still a bit of a surprise. Uh, I'll announce that hopefully in a few weeks time. Um, but we've got Aiden here from Unreal Productions and he is the one that does all of our mock rocks. So in the Bear Falls Cafe, the Snow Leopard House, in the Parrot House, and in our Animal Displays building as well. So Aiden's gonna be running the course for the mock rock conference and we've got delegates from eight or nine different zoos coming from all across the country to come and learn about how to make mock rock. And if you're wondering what mock rock is, it's basically what it says on the tin, which is fake rock. So it's where you have like a mesh frame and then you put concrete on it and you carve it into the shape of a rock or a tree. And it is an incredible art that people pay a great deal of money for. So we're very excited to get the course off and running. But as we have a look down here, We've actually redone these two enclosures as well. You can't see them at the minute, but we've raised the floor in them so we can give our savannah monitor and we're gonna get some red foot tortoises in as well. Uh, and we're gonna have a little pond in there. So it's gonna be really exciting. And all of this is gonna come out at the bottom there into our nocturnal bit. So basically when you come in the zoo, you come right through here and it's a one-way system all the way out past the sugar glider. So it's gonna be super cool. But yeah, let's have a look and see how the mock rock workshop goes. Before the delegates arrived, Aiden wanted to pre-prep a few areas in the zoo so that he could show the delegates different parts of the mock rocking process. So we decided that we wanted a random tree and a boulder in our new bit here. And the first part of the process is putting rods up. There's a very specific technique used for applying concrete to mesh, and that's included in the concrete mix formula, but also with the pressure used to push it onto the mesh. You don't want to push it too hard or else it all falls through. So it's 
day one of the mock rock course here at the zoo and uh, we've welcomed keepers and staff from all over the country from different zoos to come and learn about the art of mock rock from from Aidan and uh, from us and see some of our examples that we already have at the zoo. So Aidan set up this little project yesterday um, of a kind of like Amazonian K-pop tree and then a little boulder in the corner just to try and demonstrate meshing. So for those of you who don't know what mock rock is, it is literally fake rock. The clue is in the name. And it is made up of a very kind of specific set of meshing and framework. So underneath here, there's loads of rods. As he drills holes in the ground, sticks the rods in, and then bends them around to make this kind of shape. Uh, and he does it in kind of a lattice formation. Then he uses this mesh, and the mesh kind of gets attached to the framework, so it's quite solid. This is a very, very solid structure now. Um, I know it, it, it doesn't seem like it would be that solid, but because all the rods are in place in that kind of grid pattern and they're all kind of attached together at the joints with zip ties there, it's incredibly strong. So now this can actually sustain quite a bit of weight on it. So it's just been drilled into the walls and all the rods are attaching to the walls as well. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clever stuff. So that's the first and the second stage of mock rocking. And then over here, we've got the third stage. This is called scratch coating. Um, and that's where you put the first kind of base layer of cement on, um, and then you scratch it. And that's to make it keyed, basically, so that when you put the final layer of mock rock on here, the final layer of concrete to carve, it's actually got something to adhere to. So Aiden's gonna be demonstrating today to the delegates of how to apply that final top coat of cement and then to carve it. And that's the exact same process that he's used for all of the trees here at the zoo. We've got them in the cafe, we've got them in the parrot house, in the display building as well. Um, and trees are super quick to kind of build. Um, it's an amazing art and obviously it takes a lot of time to perfect and obviously Aiden's done that for many years. Um, but it's just great to be having so many different people here from different zoos uh, learning this amazing technique because this is something, obviously for those who are not in the industry, Mock rock is that thing that you kind of really, really want in your zoo, but it's super expensive. But usually you have these big corporate companies that come in with a huge team and it costs you literally hundreds of thousands of pounds to get mock rock. So being a small zoo and having mock rock are usually two things that don't go hand in hand. But us being able to offer this mock rock course gives these other small zoos the tools and the knowledge to be able to attempt it and try it back in their zoos. So it's super exciting to be hosting the first ever mock rock workshop. doing you just keep it level don't be going like this Don't just go all the way down, do, do it a bit like this because it just adds a little bit of different textures to it, you know, like tree textures.
So I just wanted to take you back into our parrot house. It's been a little while since I've been in here actually, uh, and I've certainly since I've taken you guys in here, uh, and show you how it's developed. And obviously to have a look at the mock rock in here as well. The mock rock in this building is the most recent mock rock that we had uh, built, and that was last summer, ready for the parent house opening. Uh, so you can see we've got this great kind of K-pop tree here that Aiden's carved out. It's got the huge buttresses in it, because um, this was originally meant to be like a kind of a South American concept in here. Um, so these are very much South American style trees. Uh, you can see all the different textures in there and the root networks kind of reaching down into the ground. And it looks really effective. And then as we walk along here, we've obviously got the stream here. Have a little look at that view there. It looks really, really effective. So we've got this huge kind of triple level waterfall in the corner there, uh, which runs. Uh, it's all on a pump system. Um, and then we've kind of gone for a aztec -y themed wall. Um, and all of this has just been carved out of concrete. Uh, some pretty cool symbols and stuff there as well. So it's amazing what you can do with concrete. And the other really cool thing I wanted to show you actually was the bridge that has been carved too. So you're not just limited with mock rock to trees and rocks and things like that. You can make anything. Uh, I've seen people build log cabins out of concrete, but it just looks like logs. Um, so yeah, check out this bridge. So the bridge has kind of got a lot of a twisted vine look to it. Um, a really, really nice texture. Um, but yeah, so the mock rock workshop is over now. Um, all the delegates have left. And I think it was really, really successful. Everyone really, really enjoyed it, learned a lot. Um, mock rock industry, for those of you who aren't kind of in this zoo world, is a very kind of a exclusive, expensive industry. It's very mysterious and shrouded in secrets because it's worth so much money. So the people that know how to do it generally te tend to keep their mouths shut. Um, so it's really great that Aiden uh, from Unreal Productions was willing to share his knowledge and his skills that he's learned over the years of doing mock rock. And I think that the participants in the workshop really enjoyed it. They all got to make uh, a little sample of bark uh, to kind of take away with them. Um, and actually test out their skills of carving like a wood effect with some knots and stuff. Um, so that was really cool that they got to do that. Um, I'm just checking my feet because I know there's a parrot in here that likes to nibble on ankles and I'm alone. But yeah, the, the guys on the workshop, they got to practice carving like a rock wall on the side of our meerkat enclosure. And so we set, up, we set that up so that they could actually practice throwing cement at the wall and then getting the trowels out and actually practicing carving some of the rock shapes. Uh, and they did a really, really good job. Each kind of person got their own little section. We also went into the meerkat enclosure and Aiden showed them some painting techniques. So they actually got to see how he applies paint. One of the most interesting things about applying paint to rocks is the fact that rocks are not just gray. For example, if we have a little look at this rock here. Look at all the different shades of gray in there. You've got like a really dark granite, You've got a really white color that's along the edges here. Very, very light surface there and some darker areas where it's like wet. So there's no such thing as a gray rock. So painting a realistic style rock is incredibly challenging. So Aiden was kind of showing the techniques of applying the dark tones and the light tones and the dry brush techniques as well. There's so much involved in mock rocking, it's insane. Um, and then of course we had our tree and our boulder that was built in our new kind of nocturnally bit. That area will hopefully be opened up for the summer but I'll keep you updated on that as we go along. But anyways, it's been super hot, really busy couple of days. Thanks so much to the delegates that came along to our first ever mock rock workshop. I'm sure we're going to be running them again. Um, I hope that you guys on our YouTube channel have found it interesting to learn a little bit more about what we use here at the zoo. Um, obviously it's not just the parrot enclosure but it's also uh, in our snow leopard exhibit, in the Bear Falls Cafe and in our displays building as well. So we've got quite a bit of mock rock all over the place. Um, I hope you found that interesting anyways and if you haven't done already please do subscribe to our Northumberland Zoo channel uh, and like this video. 
and enjoy the rest of the week. I hope the weather stays nice for you and we shall see you next week. Bye guys.